And so when I went to fifth grade, I had a classmate. I mean, we went we went to middle school together, and then a couple years ago, I heard he got killed. But at the same time, I was trying to help him out, saying, "You got to stop doing this." And he just shrugged it off, saying, "Like, man, leave me alone. You lame like that. You're not you're not with me like that." And next thing you know, I found out that he passed away. I was like, "Dang!" And they get to the point. I see so many of my classmates and getting arrested every day. To the point, I grown numb to it. And like it's just an everyday thing. And then at night, I sometimes get real sad. I'm like. Because I could be gone this next day. Like, I don't know what well, I don't know what I want to do. I mean, I could be the most successful man on this planet. But the next thing you know, I made one stupid mistake and I throw my whole life away. And then I just don't know. If Wayne would tell me this this is a five dollar rock, this is a ten dollar rock, this is a twenty dollar rock. But I am just listening on like man, Rob, Rob's cool, man. You know, Rob, I ain't know about the drug game. Rob's telling me about the drug game, right? You know, by my mind, I said, you know, Rob, I can tell Rob, Rob's better than this. He really is. And Rob is smarter than me. Smarter than me, but he's making a decision that's really going to hurt down the road, right? We're coming, we're seniors in high school. Rob and three other guys commit a robbery at a convenience store. Rob is 17 years old. The leader is 21 years old. He, he dropped out of high school. Rob and two of us boys are with this guy. They go just, they're just going to do a robbery, but the man, my man, the older guy, shoots the clerk in the head, kills the clerk. So what's Rob charging? Murder. 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 What sentence does Rob get? Life. Life. life without parole. All of them got life without parole. All Rob was was a lookout. Rob didn't even get out the car. So 10 years later, I'm, I'm 40 years old, so 10 years later, I go visit Rob in prison in North Carolina. Rob was a tough guy, but 10 years in, uh, in prison, he's not a tough guy, really. Rob talking to me, we talked. I have a twin brother, we both went out to go see him. And he was just looking at us like, man, what are y'all doing in your life? And what's going on in y'all's life? He wanted to see what we were doing. And we we're trying to figure out how he's doing. And he just looked at me and said, man, you know, I wish I, I wish I'd done what y'all did, man. I wish I'd just, just studied, man. I wish I just did those things, you know? And I felt bad because I felt like that one example that Rob cut up that crack cocaine, I thought it was cool. I'm laughing and joking with him, but that's not real, man. Rob had to make the decision. So Rob is never getting out. Rob is dying in prison. He got no parole. They shot the clerk in the head, execution style. He didn't do it. The man guy did. So now Rob is done. 17 years old, he'll never see the outside of a prison again the rest of his life. We were going to basically, we claimed that we were going to sell him the drugs and he was going to bring the money. for two kilos of cocaine. He, about, he said he was, gonna bring, he was gonna bring the money. Well, long story short, we the police. We didn't have any drugs for him, but we arrested him to take his money, okay? <clears throat> he went to court. Now this man had a, an extensive um, criminal history. This incident happened in, in Detroit. He had an extensive criminal history. We went to court. We, uh, the prosecutor attempted to give him a plea agreement felt in his heart of hearts, I didn't do anything, I just brought the money. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, the prosecutor brought the plea agreement down to, I think it was within eight years or something like that. Well, he wouldn't accept it. So good. He wouldn't accept it. Well, I'm here to tell you, when the judge has his sentence out, sentence out because of his criminal history, he got life. He was 25 years old. So I want you guys to know that this right, what I'm saying right now, it's about decisions. You make a choice. It is your choice what you want to do. You let nobody tell you that you can't succeed in life. Because success is about making a decision right here. You, once you make the decision and you say, I am going to move forward and I'm going to, I'm going to overcome this. It doesn't matter what anybody, you know how many people said to me that you want, that I wasn't going to make it? I tell you I dropped out of high school. They told me I wasn't going to make it, so I went back. You understand? I went back, I got my GED, I went to college, and I made it happen. Right? Uh, I was actually arrested earlier this year, and um, it, it hurts because people think like, oh, this is just a misdemeanor, oh, I'm gonna get off here, this this, this gonna happen. But I have to go see, uh, I have to go to pretrial. I Sometimes I have to miss school just because I have to go to court, and people think, oh, it's just a small thing, it won't affect me as much. 
But these things hold, you know, it holds, it's accountable for a lot of things that happen, you know? And this year they be like, oh, this man never in school. But that's what I'm doing, I'm at court. I, I gotta go to court. If I skip court, that's a bench warrant. And it's more time. I became a convicted felon at the age of 16 years old. How many of y'all are 16 or older in here now? When I became a convicted felon, my whole entire life changed. I mean, my entire life changed. Once you become a convicted felon, it's so many things you can't do. It's so many. How many people in your family are convicted felons? How many people have a brother or father or a cousin? And how difficult do you see life for them? Seriously. How many of them have a stable job? The people who you're thinking about right now, how many of them have a job where they've held that job for over a year? How hard was it for them to find that job? Did y'all watch that struggle? What you say, sir? He struggled to do it? All I've known, that's all I've known my entire life. From the age of 16, you're still a child, right? Yes. So I became an adult as a convicted felon. When you're a convicted felon, not only is it hard to find jobs, it's certain communities you can't move to. I have a degree in psychology and in accounting. I'd never be able to work in either of those, those fields. I went to school and paid to get a degree just because I wanted to better myself, knowing that I can never get licensed nor have a job in either field because once you become a convicted felon, you can't get a professional license. That sounds crazy, right? Now how about this? I had to buy my house and put it in somebody else's name because for years the police used to kick in my door just to check and see what I was doing. I was at home sleep once and I wake up to people in my bedroom and I got an attitude with them so they locked me up. I didn't break a law, I didn't commit a crime, a new crime, but because I'm a convicted felon, they can come in my house at any time. So I put my house, my cars, everything in other people's name because I'm scared to stay in a house that's in my own name. Can you imagine living your life like that? And that's from mistakes that I made when I was 16 years old. People still kicking the door with the flat screens now? Yeah. <laughs> If it's, if it's what? If it's beautiful. If it's beautiful? Yeah. All right, so I know people, I know people still doing it. But so the question right here is, what's the cost of the crime? Somebody kicks a door in, kicks a flat screen off the wall of somebody's house or somebody's business. What's the cost? Not just in time, but in money. So what, what do you sell a flat screen in the street for? What's it go for? Uh, 500. Uh, 60 inch, HD, oh, Sony. 650. Oh, wow. Smart TV. Alright, so, so let's say let's say the TV you can sell on the street for five hundred. That's what we say. Five hundred cat. The TV may cost, I don't know, three thousand. What does burglary get you? Jail time. Five years. Ten of them. So we're gonna a five year sentence, for four years one year in jail, and four years on probation. So can we the next slide? So what, what, what is it? What's the cost? I'm not going to read it all to you. Y'all can read better than I can, 18, probably. $18,000 for a $500 TV you can sell on the street. Let alone that, incarceration with grown men. Is it worth the cost? Uh, my mother, she, uh, she actually played a big part in my life. I mean, because, you know, she's a mom, but um, I was uh, some, what some would call gang affiliated. And I felt that I, I needed to do what I saw everyone else doing to obtain money because my family, my household is a single parent household and I didn't have money like that. So I had never picked up a gun and I, I you know, I, I, I got a gun and um, I got caught with the gun at home. My mother was doing the laundry and I had these Adidas pants. You know, I folded, I, I folded my gun with the Adidas pants to hide it, and my mother found the gun. She asked me what I was doing with it. Now, of course, I, <laughs> of course, I lied and said I found it. Um, and she, she automatically knew what it was because uh, in in the in the Adidas pants, she, she also saw what uh what was with the gun, and um, which is why I'm here at this school now to change my life around. And. Um, you know, I wasn't that type of kid who would listen. I was hard-headed. I probably still am, but um, I'm learning. <laughs>